Hi, welcome everybody tuning in to our live stream. I'm Krista Westbrook. I'm uh, teaching a beginning glass blowing class this week with a lot of wonderful students here at the Corning Museum of Glass at the studio. Um, assisting me today will be Madeline, all the way from Texas, and we'll be making uh, several pieces of art for you guys to see uh, kind of from home. So it's going to be some basic shapes we've been going over, but advancing a little bit more into color. So I'm going to gather up some glass out of the furnace and add some color. So I'm just going to get a really small gather out of the furnace. Make sure it has bubbles on it already. And I'm just going to air marble a little bit before I go into the color. If I go straight into that color, my glass is just going to go all over the place. So I'm going to let it air marble just a little bit longer than I normally do. This way that that air marbling helps with that rolling into my frit and being able to control the color on the surface. All right, I'm gonna dip down into my color, kind of start a little bit of an angle and almost like I'm marbling into the color to add it onto the surface. Make sure I get the tip really well, do that one more time. Trying not to change that shape, holding the weight in my hands get a nice little layer of color on top. All right, I'm gonna melt this in. Now, if I wanted to do two colors, I wanna melt the first layer in first, get it kind of added onto the surface, make it sticky again, and then I'll go into my secondary color. This also helps that, that, so it doesn't contaminate my second color that I'm putting on. If this first color is not melted in well, I could roll that white frit into my green frit, and then I'll get my that white frit in the green. So I'm gonna melt it in. You'll see the, the texture of the pattern of our frit change. Some colors even go clear. You can see that right there. So I'm gonna go right over here, back into my other color. Same thing again. I like to start at the tip, holding the weight, almost like I'm shaping on the marver, not pressing too hard into the color. Go again, make sure you get it nice and evenly coated all the way up to the moil. And now we've got color on that as well. So I chose kind of a transparent green. It said adventurine on it, so it'll have a little sparkle. I like sparkle in my work. Also, hi, mom and dad, for tuning in. I know their class is also tuning in as well, so I'm super excited to have all the folks from Texas watching. So I'm gonna melt that in pretty good. Notice I haven't started the bubble yet, right? What I'm gonna do is add now some pattern, okay? I could go on from here and start to blow and start my bubble. Go on to the next step. I'm gonna add another step to this so you can see how you can start to incorporate pattern into the glass as well. So I'm gonna drop it into the optic mold here, also known as a drop mold. And that optic mold will give me some ridges on the surface. When I do this, I don't wanna clog my pipe. So I'm gonna put my thumb over the pipe mouthpiece, go into my mold and push down. That way I don't clog the mouthpiece and I get this nice pattern. I'm gonna melt this pattern in, and it's gonna kind of cause a faux cane effect on the surface. All right, any questions so far from you guys? Okay, so I'm gonna melt this in pretty good, remove the ridges, but what's gonna happen is the glass is gonna to start to constrict in those areas, and then it's gonna create a pattern for me. So I'll melt this in really, really well, and get it all nice and soft. And then I'm gonna use my marver here to shape, center, and cool the glass. Now I want this to twist a little bit. So after I cool the sides, I'm gonna lift up off the marver and twist in the direction I want it to go. So I'm gonna start shaping at my moil first, right? Cold in first, and then work to the tip, the hot end. Pull some of that glass off the moil. And I'm gonna start to turn in one place as I drag back. 
This gives me a nice swirl effect. And then you can see I'm starting that patterning process. If I put it in earlier, I would just have a kind of polka dotted effect. So I was asked, what would happen if I would have just put in the bubble and not added the optics? Yeah, I would end up just having this nice dotted pattern on the surface. Frit is really nice. It comes in all different sizes, um, from really, really chunky. And we have examples on the table to really fine frit, almost like baby powder. And then it'll give you different effects onto the surface as you've added it on. So I added a really, really thin layer so I could see the bubble. Less is more, right, with color. Give a little, yourself a little accent, but then it gives you an opportunity to read the thickness and thinness of the bubble. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time, but this time I'm gonna twist it at the bench. And what I'm gonna do is use those diamond shears to cut off that extra mass at the tip and really get the pattern to continue all the way to the bottom. Yeah, it'll also help me twist it up just a little bit more for me. So I'm going to take my tweezers, give myself a little handle, and I'm going to twist in the same direction that I've already started. Now I have a pattern all the way to the tip. All right, this is where I'm going to melt it in and start my bubble. Notice how this shape got really long, okay? I'm going to get it pretty hot, and then when I come out, I'll shape it, cool down the surface a little bit, and then I'm gonna hold it up so that bubble or that mass starts to flow a little bit back onto the pipe so that my bubble blows out nice and evenly into the mass of glass. Constantly turning the iron when I come out, gently moving it back and forth. All right, I'm gonna hold it up. And I'm gonna watch for that expansion to happen. Now, because I've got color, it's hard to see the bubble, right? But now I'm gonna watch that mass change shape. You can see it getting a little rounder. It's taking a little bit longer time to come out, but it's coming out nice and even. Now the bubble inside is really small. It's not too big. I'm gonna do that one more time. Just so that it evenly blows out, get a little bit hotter this time. And then I'm gonna gather over the top of this, okay? So I get a little bit bigger mass, can be a little bit bigger for all over. Okay. All right, any questions so far? So I'm just waiting for uh, seeing some movement in the glass before I come out. Because, right, I want it to be hotter than last time. I may have lost a little bit of that core heat. So what I'm going to do is build up that heat a little bit more than I did last time. I'll shape it again and introduce that bubble. It might come out a little bit quicker this time. But I want to make sure not to blow too crazy hard so I don't lose control of it. There it goes. Now you can start to see it getting bigger. All right, I'm gonna let off. I like to shape this up into a cylinder before I gather over the top of it. This also cools my bubble down so that I can get ready. All right, so I have this really nice swirl pattern happening here. Now while I'm waiting for this to cool down, I can do a couple of things. I can remove some of the heat with my jacks keeping it on center, and I can also use it to get my jacks hot to wax them. Get a little wax. All right, wanna let this cool down, right? If I don't want to cool down, I could collapse the bubble. When I come out of the gather, I'm gonna cool my pipe down a little bit, but I'm gonna come over here and use a block. So, 
just for sake purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this here so then my partners know, okay, that's the one I wanna use, okay? That looks about the right size that I want. If I need to go smaller, I can go down, or if I need a little bit bigger, I can go up. Kind of right in the middle. All right, we're looking at color and movement. You can see it's really dulled down in color here. We can really start to see that green, and it's not moving anymore. So this is kind of a safe bet. I can go ahead and go into the furnace. Now when we start using color, we want to be more mindful of this so we don't lose any color into our clear furnace. So I'm going to go right in, gather up a little bit more. Notice how Madeline already started opening the door when I went in with my left hand so that she was ready for me and I wasn't having to wait for her to open. That left hand went forward, she knew that she's got to open that door. So this will do a little bit of air marvering while I'm letting this cool down, but then it'll also start to heat up my bubble a little bit while I'm kind of waiting out. So I'm going to walk right over here to the, back to my bench, shape this up. Madeline's already ready with my block. Thank you. And then now I'm just going to equalize the heat, let that heat soak into the bubble because I got it so cold. Remember when we see it smoke, we're going to dip into the bucket and then come back and shape again. Nice smooth rotations using the whole bench rail. Now I want to equalize the heat even more, so I'm going to go back into my reheating chamber. And I'm going to block one more time, just to make sure my bubble is nice and even in heat before we start to blow this out. Notice how slow and steady I'm going. I'm not rushing around. I'm not rolling really quickly. I'm taking my time, following the movement of the glass. Keeping my glass on center by the time I want to touch it to a tool. All right. You can take your metal paddle. You can cool the tip. I'm going to have you go ahead and blow for me. She's going to start off really soft. But I'm just kissing the tool against the glass, kind of like I'm rolling it on the marver. Now, what's nice about this shape is if you do accidentally blow it out a little too thin out here, and off. We're able to contract that glass back in to create that nice bowl shape. So for our viewers at home, we're going to be making a double walled bowl for this first piece. Double walled bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that up again. I started my jack line. I didn't squeeze it in too hard. I didn't let the glass get too cold. I felt that it was getting stiff. So before I lose my core heat, I'm gonna go back to the reheating chamber, build up that heat again, and do that move again. I'm gonna set my jack line a little bit deeper. I wanna have a consistent, smooth line for that break off later on in the process. So I wanna make sure to get that really set in while I have the heat next to the moil. So again, I'm gonna go straight up and down, turn before I touch. Blow soft, please. And off. Watching my bubble, it blows out too fast. Have her come off, blow, please. You can blow a little harder. I'm going for a nice round shape and off. One more, please. And off. Okay. So now what I want to do is selectively heat this. And I'm going to let my jack line cool down a little bit before I go into the heat. You can see it's still kind of moving. 
But what I want to do is I'm going to use the heat to only heat about halfway through the bubble. So pretend this is the glory hole doors. And then I'm going to selectively heat just the tip of the bubble, kind of splitting the hemispheres in half, OK? When I come back to the bench, I'm going to use my paddle to flatten it all the way to the center, and then Madeline's going to suck in when I tell her to, OK? So I always flash my moil, and then I'm going to come back and selectively heat halfway through my piece. Does everybody see that? Amy, can you see? Here, I'll come to this side. See? All right, always flash my piece before I come back to the bench. I'm going to build up a little bit more heat, so I'm just going to selectively heat again at the tip of the bubble. One last flash. And I'm going to come back to the bench, making sure I keep everything on center. Okay. I'm going to press. Suck in, please. More. And off. Now you have a bowl. OK? Thank you. Thank you. OK? So you don't have to punty everything. You can do this for a cup, too. You know, maybe make a taller cylinder shape, keep just a little bit of the tip, and then suck in. We also have the blow hoses, which we'll use here in a minute. So now what do I need to do, right? Got to flash my piece down, equalize the heat all the way to the moil, come back, hang out, let my assistant know you're ready to go. Go ahead and suit up. I'm done with the piece. So I'm going to flash again. What we're going to do is fire polish the bottom and flatten it with a metal tag. I'm going to use the straight shears to cool the surface of my uh, jack line, causing that stress to break. Notice how tight the jack line is. Okay, the tighter it is, the easier it's going to nicely break off. You just want to be careful not closing off the hole. Taking my time, making sure my reheats are nice and even. Equalizing that heat all the way through. All right cold tool against the hot glass to cause some stress all the way around. Take my paddle to give me a nice little tap. Can I have you put this in the bucket for me? And then I'm just going to fire polish the bottom and flatten it. And then Madeline's going to put it away for us. So I like to get eye level with it. Also get it in the fire shot. All right, and then we'll put it away. Now the easiest way to grab this is usually taking your thumb and holding it by the lip to then set it down into the annealer instead of cradling it makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to dive your whole body in. So she flipped it around, grabbed it by the lip, so then she can, yeah, serve it inside of there, right? A little bit easier. Okay, questions? Oh, great question. So they're asking, is, when they suck the air in, is the air hot? And no, no, there's no. It feels as if you're trying to drink a strawberry shake or some kind of shake with fruit in it. And then the, the end of the straw is stuck and plugged with a little bit of something at the end. So it's really, she's just feeling pressure. It doesn't really suck anything in. There's no hot air. There's no chemicals. There's nothing that's coming in. It just feels like a really tight pressure because she's fighting against that glass starting to cool, 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 cool down as it comes in. But I have to be hot enough for it to be able to suck in, right? So if you don't get it on the first try, you might have to get it hotter so then you can actually have your partner suck in. You can also hook up the hose here. So if you want to do it for yourself, hook up the hose, and then you can suck in as you're paddling at the same time. OK? Great question. Any other questions? Yeah. When you 
There, there is a small hole, right? Because I have to be able to blow and I have to be able to suck in, right? So there has to be a hole there. If I close it off, we won't be able to do either one of those things. So I had a really small hole there. It was probably a quarter of an inch big. It was pretty tight, but I just fire polished it and smooshed it. So then it makes it so there's not a hole in there anymore. If there is a hole left over, it's not a bend of the world. Really, you're just gonna fire polish that bottom so it's not flat, or I'm sorry, that it, so it is flat and it has no sharp edges. But you can kind of melt that in to remove that hole to cover it. So then you can like wash it in the, in the sink and everything like that and you don't have to worry about water getting into it. Good question. Any other questions? Are right, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna gather up some more glass. I always like to preheat some of the color, or I'm sorry, the pipe, just a little bit so I get a nice cherry red. Yeah, just a nice light sprinkle across the marble would be great. So Madeline's getting our color ready. We have this beautiful like celadon blue. That's great, Madeline. That looks awesome. I like to have less color on there so I can see the bubble expanding. This one, we're gonna make a nice bottle shape for everyone. I'm gonna cool the pipe down while I'm air marvering, kind of doing two things at once. Start with the cold in, let it kind of drip off. Notice how my back end is up a little higher than the, my front end. So that glass starts to peel off to the tip of the pipe. And I'm gonna go level and slowly pull back so I don't bend the pipe. But I'm really watching my glass as I'm doing this. Every so often checking the pipe to where I'm cooling. Okay, same thing. I like to start at the tip. If you're only wanting to cover the sides, that's fine too. But if I'm wanting to cover the whole thing, I like to start at the tip where it's the hottest. I'm just gonna do some light sprinkles of this on here. I love this color. All right, I'm gonna melt this in. So what you're looking for when you're melting in your frit, especially when you get into that chunkier frit, this is a little bit chunkier than the white and the green that I put on. So it's gonna take a little bit more time to melt in. What you're looking for is that those little bits of colored frit are starting to smooth out, kind of starting to flatten, kind of like chocolate chips in a cookie. So now I have a nice smooth kind of texture on the surface. I'm gonna do that one more time. Now I have a little bit of a waste from where I marvered into the color. And so what I'm gonna do when I come out, I'm gonna kind of slightly hold it up so it compresses the glass a little bit onto the pipe, just a little bit, so that when I come to the marver, I can make it all nice and shaped up into a cylinder. I can feel the glass on my fingers is really soft and gooey. So I'm giving it an extra roll. Okay, I can see the center of my glass because I have less color. <laughs> Start my bubble. Oh, it's taking its time. There it is. Nice and slow and steady. Notice how I didn't, I waited, I waited and waited. Just wait for that to push through the surface of that pipe to get my nice bubble in there. Let my thumb off. I'm gonna shape this up one more time. And I'm gonna let this cool down to get another gather on top. So again, preheat my jacks. Cool my bubble down at the same time. Kind of doing two things at once. This is a good time too to just practice your turning. You can just sit here back and forth, right? When we have a pipe or a punty in our hands, we're always keeping it moving. We're never stopping. We can stop and slow down to make it fall back on center, 
but we want to keep it moving. Because even though this doesn't look like it's very hot, I want to keep it on center at all costs. So I'll give another wipe down with my jacks. Get those nice and waxed up. All right, I'm going to gather over this again. We're going to use the block again to shape. Remember, we're going to start at the cold side, shape the cold side first, and then we'll work our way and finish the block off level to shape the rest of it. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna let that heat soak in. Air marver, make sure my glass is staying on center. Holding it nice and level as I walk over to the bench. Notice how close I am to the glass with this left hand. That makes it so much easier to turn when I sit nice and close right here. I always bring my glass in really close. Yeah. Thank you. So Madeline did the right thing. The gather was really big and wide from me turning. Sometimes when we turn really fast, the glass spreads from that hot, fresh gather. So I, she gave me a bigger block than I needed to kind of shape it down. And then she gave me the next size down so I fit like a glove with this block. Anytime you see it smoke, just dip back in the water, come back over. Notice how I'm not looking back at the bucket. All right, I'm gonna reheat it. Notice the color difference. Okay, questions so far? No? Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start to build up some heat, get the heat going. So then that section two and three that we've been talking about most of the time, mostly section two, so I can bowl out more of a bottled shape but I have to be able to heat that section up, get that core heat back to do it. I would, if I wanted bigger than this, yes, I would let this layer cool down to get more glass and get a bigger gather. I typically like to put my color on on the first gather so that I could see the layers. Um, but you, could, you definitely could put on the color after all of your gathers and then do it. It just becomes really tricky if you don't have enough color or you don't have um, the glass is really big and heavy. It seems to go on a little bit more even when I have a smaller gather. Right, I'm gonna do that again. Kind of building up that heat in section two and three that we talked about earlier this week and then cooling section four so I'm able to kind of counteract that heat where I want it to blow versus where I don't. What's really great about this also when you start making bottled shapes or really tall shapes you have a reserve of glass left over right it's thick there so then if I wanted to make a nice tall bottle shape then I have that extra glass for later on. I haven't, nope, I've been just shaping and cooling, shaping and cooling. I'm gonna blow on this one though. Kissing it to the marver, cooling that end. You'll notice the mass of glass is kind of gathering a little bit more on the end and it's stretching near the neck because that neck is getting hotter and hotter. All right, I'm gonna hang it over the bench and then give it a blow.
cool my tip again. Keeping my center of the bubble. And I'll blow one more time. What's nice about this is it's hanging and dragging out the glass, but also I'm blowing and shaping it out. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna start my jack line before I lose any more core heat and before I blow it out any more. You can always come to the bench, start a line in the glass. I like to give it a little bit of a hang so it stays nice and straight. But I'm gonna go right here, I'm okay, thank you though. I'm gonna go right here at the top of the bottle. Start my jack line. I'm gonna go where the bottom of the bottle neck is gonna be. And start to kind of drag that neck out a little bit. And Madeline did the right thing. She was ready with a paddle, just like Catherine was telling you guys earlier this week, ready for that shielding, because there is a lot of heat that's coming off of this. All right, I'm gonna do that one more time just to make my bottle a little bit taller. What's another way I could do, make my bottle taller besides dragging it out with the jacks? Giving it a little bit of a hang, right? Letting gravity working with gravity instead of against it. Exactly. Okay, I can hang it down as I walk to the bench. Let it stretch naturally. Just gonna make sure my jack line's nice and tight. Go ahead and blow for me, Madeline. Now I'm watching the tip of the bubble, but also thinking about when I switch directions, I don't want to jerk the pipe, right? Because Madeline is blowing at the same time. So I'm being very smooth and intentional. And off. She's blowing at the softest pressure possible. All right, so we started from the moil. We've added our jack line. I then work the neck. Now I'm gonna work the body shape. So I'm gonna flash the whole thing. Come just to the body. And we're gonna start to blow that out a little bit more. I have to be cautious of the bottom blowing out too quickly. So I'm gonna use the back of my jacks to cool the tip of the bubble. Always flash your piece every so often and then come back to that shape where you're going to be selectively heating. Flash one more time before you come to the bench. Notice the color difference. My dots are glowing bright orange where I want it to be hot and it's starting to cool near the neck where I don't want it to be. All right, blow please. You can use your metal tag to cool the glass down, off or you can take your paper. When you get a bigger shape, you want my sur more surface area. Blow, please. Blow harder, please. And off. I'm gonna get a little bit more heat and do that again. Flash before I sit down at the bench so my moil's not too cold. Keep my glass on center, keeping it moving and rotating. And blow, please. Blow harder, please. And off. Blow again for me one more time. And off. You want to go ahead and start the gathers? For the... Yep, yep. 
All right, so I'm gonna kind of let this bubble cool down just a little bit, especially with the tip, right? It's really hot. I wanna add more glass onto this. So I don't really want this moving around, but I wanna keep it warm. So I'm watching the color of my pipe. It's getting kind of a darker cherry red. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash this but I wanna be careful not to overheat the tip of my bubble. So short flashes, practice your flashing shapes, get that power stance with the tracks here. Come back away from the heat, hang out while you're waiting for your assistant. Take your time if you wanna get a little colder. I'm gonna flash one more time, Madeline. All right, we're gonna drop some glass right onto the bottom to create a foot. So I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna set my mouthpiece on my foot, or you can set it on the floor. I like to put it right in between my big toe and my little toe. And then I'm gonna cut it off right over top. All right, lift up. Get that gluey glass right in the center. Give it a couple of cuts before you do a all the way through cut. Notice how I kind of squeezed it down first. And I'm gonna go in to reheat it. Make sure my moil doesn't get too cold. That bit, that hot bit that we added on, the foot, is gonna be the hottest. So Madeline's gonna get ready with a paddle. I'm gonna make sure it's on center first. So I'm gonna lean over the bench, make sure it's pushed on nice and on center. Also cooling it just a little bit before she touches it with that wooden paddle. All right, on please. Oh yeah, fire! And off. Great, you wanna go ahead and start the punty for me? Now I wanna let this kinda of cool down just a little bit before I add the punty. So I can take my Sofietta here and blow on it. All right, I'm gonna flash because I don't want my moil to get too cold. Now while I'm waiting, I'm gonna flash one more time. So I'm gonna hang out outside the bench. I'm not gonna sit down yet. It takes more energy to get back in, in and out. Short flashes to get ready. My assistant's gonna make sure that we're all set. Oh, that looks wonderful. I'm gonna sit down at the bench and get ready with the tweezers. I'm gonna give it one more blow. Especially right where we're gonna make contact. find my center. Now this is where a lot of people are kind of getting tricky. If you need to put it back on center, Madeline's only watching my left hand, right? As the assistant, she's making sure that she's following along with me. I'm in control of the turning. She's gently holding the punty and I'm straightening it out. All right, how do you feel? Great. Okay, good. I'm gonna pour some water on my jack line. Oh, a little bit more. Make sure you hear that little crizzly noise. All right, we're gonna bring it up. Ready? Yep. And we're gonna break it off. Woohoo! All right. Now what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna kind of clean up the lip and then we're gonna do the wrap, okay? So she's gonna gather out of the amber pot here in a second. And she's gonna get it almost a little bit less than what she got before. And she's gonna point it up a little bit so that we have a nice pointed section so that when I attach it, it not only is nice and narrow, but it's not this big glob that I'm attaching on there. It's almost like I'm drawing a pencil drawing of a spiral around the top. Got it. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Um, no, you can go ahead. A little less than that with Amber, yes please. So 
So while she's doing that, I'm gonna make sure everything stays on center. Making sure my punty connection isn't flopping around. I'll give it a little bit of a tap cool down here at the tip. But I'm not gonna open it up too much because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave it kind of narrow for my wrap. Now you can do this on any shape. It doesn't have to be on like the neck of a vessel. You could do it on a round shape if you wanted to. You could do it on your cups that you have. You could put that nice wrap on the body. You could do it before you do your transfer. You could do it after you do your transfer, either way. So this body wrap you could do from lots of different ways. And if you guys want to see some examples, I've got some books over here I can show you some examples too. So I'm constantly flashing the piece. She's going to get that ready by shaping it. So she's going to go to the marver and almost kind of pointing it up like a pencil. But that cross section of where it changes the widest, she wants that to be over the punty. And the reason why is we want it to pull off nice and evenly off of the gather. Can you point it up just a little bit more? Yeah. You can go ahead and get a reheat if you need to. You can do it over there too. Oh, yeah. So I'm constantly keeping my glass warm and happy. Hot likes to stick to hot, right? So I don't want this to get too cold or my wrap is not gonna stick. Okay, so I'm looking at color. Look at the difference of color here versus where I'm gonna attach this. I'm gonna attach it kind of at the base of the, the neck here and just come all the way out to the tip of my vase. So it kind of matches the foot. Little less high angle, little lower angle. So we're just going to wait. This is a good time for questions. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Oh, like you're talking about like a piece of cane? Yeah, yeah. You could definitely do some decorative work with some cane onto the surface with a torch. Absolutely. Kind of like what Christina's class is doing right now where they're adding like dots or pattern. You can actually draw onto the surface. You ready? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, sounds great. So I'm gonna grab with my diamond shears because then I can grab with those little pincers that we were talking about. You could use your tweezers, but there's a likelihood it could slip. So I like to use this. I'll grab a hold of it. She'll, then we'll attach it right onto the end here. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, we're gonna grab, I'm gonna attach, and I'm gonna pull. Rotate, 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 all the way around. And I'm gonna go all the way to the lip. And I'm gonna pull back. Thank you. Notice how it wasn't a fast motion. It's nice and easy and smooth. Moving with the consistency of the glass. Now, if the glass is really hot and going crazy, then yeah, you gotta catch it. But that glass was nice and even in heat. Madeline did a great job shaping it so that it pulled off nice and evenly all the way to the end of that glass gather. So I'm always flashing my punty, making sure it stays warm. And then all I'm gonna do now is kind of flare this out. Madeline's ready with a paddle in her hand, just in case I want her to paddle the lip as I go inside. All right, I'm gonna give it a little tap. I'm gonna go up this time, Madeline, so I'll have you go underneath. Go ahead on, and off. Awesome. All right, 
Since we're almost out of time, I'm going to show you the prunts, but I'm going to show it on this piece, okay? So what I'll do is I'm going to hot torch some sections, and then I'm going to, after I hot torch it, I'm going to have Madeline flash. So Madeline, why don't you go ahead and take this, flash the whole thing for me pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'm going to take the hot torch, light it, get it set. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller of a heat. So I'm gonna pick a spot. I'm gonna have Madeline stay on the pipe for me. Let's go right here. I'm gonna heat the spot. Get it glowy hot. And then flip. Because I have not a lot of frit on here, I can see right through my bubble. And flip. And press. All right, flash. Beautiful. We're going to do like four of those. So we're going to go 180 to the other side for the next one, Madeline. So what's nice now, she has a marker for her to tell her where that's at. So I'm also going to do like four spots, like on a clock. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And I'm going to have her flip to the other side once it kind of stops moving. Perfect just so it lines up with that last one I just did. All right, let's go ahead and flip. And one more time, come towards me. Remove the torch out of the way so you don't burn your hand and press on that hot spot and flash. Hook up your hose when you're done. So now you've got like several little techniques that you could do on. You could just do a bubble and just a foot, okay? You could do just a bubble with just color. You could do a bubble with just a body wrap. This is just multiple things in one. So we're gonna pick a side, kind of line up those other two at the three and nine o'clock mark. Get it hot and flip. Go to the other side. And flip. Get it nice and hot. Move your torch and press. All right, let's do another one. So I'm trying to heat this section almost like the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit more, so that I, when I'm pressing, I have nice heat, nice juicy heat where I'm at. What's also nice about this is, is that the bubble's nice and thick, so only the surface is getting hot right now. And then the rest of it is staying nice and neutral and not moving around. So almost kind of like the last thing you want to do if you're going to do this part of the process. This is really great if you want to add texture. Could you flip towards me? And then the next one flip towards me too, so we're a little bit closer to me. And flip. Could you add color to what now? Yeah. Yeah, so you could take a, a drop, or I'm sorry, a bit from the furnace, just one little quick gather of color, drop that on, cut it like I did for the cookie foot, and then you would want to still torch it or heat it up, but you want it as hot as possible so that you can do that. Let's do a couple more. We got time. Oh, she's taking it away from me. Sorry. No, it's okay. That's what's nice about having a good assistant. She knows that it's been out too long, right? So she's gonna go ahead and just preemptively help me out because I'm not the one heating it. Let's go in between those. And flip. You have to get it really cold. I mean, you want a little bit of a glow and flip towards me. So Say. The piece doesn't get too off center. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're flipping. Madeline, this time, can you come a little bit closer to me when you come over to the bench? So again, I'm talking to her. For, I don't want to be out here. 
right? It's really tricky. You guys have felt that too when you're doing your jack lines. It's uncomfortable. Bring it in nice and close to yourself so you can work a little bit closer. So we'll pick another spot. Let's go here. That's fine. Really what I'm making sure is, okay, go ahead and flip. Making sure that, yeah, that punty is starting to get hotter each time she flashes, which is good, and flip. But that we're keeping it on center. And hold it right there. All right, let's take another flash. So this is a great texturing tool if you're like making scales for a fish or you're wanting some like texture for like, you know, um, more of a snake skin. There's some like diamond shapes over there that are really, really nice. And flip. So you can get a lot out of just a basic bubble. Flip one more time. All right, I think we got one more. One more. So yeah, she's working to make sure that I don't fall it off center because I'm mostly worrying about where I'm torching. I'm not even touching it to turn. She's in charge of that. So she'll make sure that I kind of flips back and forth. If she, like, if I don't say flip fast enough, she might go ahead and say, all right, Krista, let's go ahead and flip this. I can see it's falling off center. Go ahead and flow towards me. So it doesn't fall off center, yeah. And flip. Beautiful. I love it. Thanks. All right, so now that we've been really focusing heat a whole lot in one section, what do we need to do before we break it off? Flash. So I'm gonna take this from my assistant so she can get heat suited up. Some of you guys were asking about, can we use a torch close to our punny connection? Absolutely, you can use a little map gas torch, a little fluffy torch if you wanted to, that propane torch. It could be pretty big and raging if you use that fluffy torch, but it is possible you could do that. But back here is the coldest, right? Because it's at the cold end. It's at that moil end. So I'm constantly, I'm just kind of warming up that section so that when I pour water on it, I'll equalize that heat by doing short flashes while she's getting ready. And then Madeline, can I have you catch this? And then we'll just fire polish it at the bench. I'm going to do one more flash. Thanks. I think my mom will be proud. All right. I'm going to grab my water. Notice the direction of my tweezers now, watch. I'm bringing the handle kind of back towards me. Madeline's getting ready, but she's making sure the, tw the, the uh, gloves don't get wet. I'm dripping the water and letting it flow into that crevice. All right, go ahead and grab it. Beautiful punty. And then Amy, can you get the door for her? Thank you. All right. We'll put it away. Is it going to stand? Ooh, it's just tall enough. Yay! All right. You guys have any last minute questions? Anything that you saw that you wanted to ask about? Somebody out in the viewer crowd might want to answer any of the, uh, ask or hear those questions as well. I know it was a lot of little bits of things that you could add all together, or you could do them singularly. You don't have to do them all at one time, okay? All right, do we have any questions out in our viewers? No? All right, I guess we're doing great. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We're so happy to have be here and have everybody watching and having this wonderful class here to learn from. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. So thank you, CMOG, and we're out.